Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 30 of the front dash build. In this video we'll look at the attitude director indicator, we'll look at its design and some developmental considerations. Let's buckle up. So my thought process in approaching the design was first to refer to some of the documentation, that being the A10C manual, just to have a bit of a look and get an idea of the uh, various parts that would comprise the ADI. Um, and then also to just do a few test flights, uh, just to take her up and just have a look at some of those aspects of it and just see how they all work together. So the point that takes me to is to start to think of the components that I would provisionally look to use to replicate each of these parts. So in terms of the warning flags, 3mm red LEDs have served me well previously in other panels. The main sphere, thinking back to the standby attitude indicator that I built previously, I think the use of a NEMA, in this case it would be a larger one, uh, a NEMA 11 for the for the role of the aircraft, the bank, and then for ADI pitch to have a look and judge between whether to use a NEMA or a servo and see which would be best. I think a servo would be more straightforward, but need to spend some time to look at that and see if that would work well enough. Uh, the ADI pitch trim, that would just be a straightforward rotary encoder. For the steering bars, which I think that would be an interesting one to certainly incorporate, I'd be looking to use servo motors and when I did the horizontal situation indicator one aspect that I didn't quite get fully incorporated originally um, was the deviation indicator so I think by managing to incorporate this functionality the steering bars with a servo will allow me to then revisit the HSI panel in a future revision and incorporate that functionality and then in terms of some of these additional aspects of the glide slope indicator and the slip ball position and turn needle, whereas a lot of the other parts of this panel are will, will be incorporated mechanically, I was quite interested to see if I could have some kind of a display here, like a OLED or TFT or um, something of that nature. With some consideration given to the uh, selection of components, I then move on to really spend a little bit of time looking at the various DCS bar snippets of code just to be clear that each of them uh, works to um, input and output data to and from the SIM to the various components and just map out which bit of code relates to which function and that they are all uh, fully tested and working. With the warning flags being quite straightforward to implement, it leaves me with three key design areas to focus on. The first will be the main sphere, followed by the glide slope indicator slip ball turn needle via some kind of display, and then finally to mechanically have the steering bars in place and a mechanism to drive them. We'll now take just a little bit of time to explore each of these areas. So the starting point for design area one is to 3D print a sphere, which will be ultimately in two halves. And I'm really looking to see if I can make this work with the servo as opposed to a stepper motor, just for the simplicity of that. And inside the sphere, there's a bracket that will hold that in place. So I've got all of my parts lined up now for some initial testing. And then I've also got a NEMA 8, which we can see to the left here, uh, should it be that we can't make it work with a servo. This is one of the first tests I did with this, just to have a look at the pitch of the, the sphere, the movement on that axis. And it was a case that the servo itself doesn't always give the smoothest movement due to its resolution, but in this case there's a lot of vibration that's passing through that and it's just shaking way too much, so it's definitely in need of some uh, revisions. And yeah, we can really see that vibration coming through now. So we move on to some further testing, uh, which follows a couple of revisions 
just to hold it more firmly in place, stop that vibration passing through. And we get to see the internals now with the sphere in terms of how that servo is mounted in place. Revisions to the arms that hold the sphere and also uh, the use of bearings now. In further testing I begin to see that the off-the-shelf bearings aren't going to be of the right dimensions for this application so I'll move on to design and 3D print my own. And although there's some concern over how smooth the internals of that 3D print will be, after a number of further revisions I arrive at a point that it gives a good smooth rotation. So I take this more developed design which is run by the servo and I start to put it through its paces, run some stress tests. And at this stage its movement is far more robust. However the key test will be how well it runs in line with the sim, which is what we can see now. So this is mirroring the movement of the sphere for the pitch axis. And if we take a close look at its resolution of movement, So I would say that movement is adequate to replicate that function of the panel, but I do think that given how prominent this instrument will be in the sim pit, I would be looking to gain a smoother movement, and therefore I would now turn my attention to trying to incorporate the NEMA motor, the stepper motor, and see what kind of results I get with that. So here we are a little bit further down the line. At this point the servo has been switched for a stepper motor and already I'm starting to get better results in terms of the, the, the movement. And while spending time just configuring the movement to get the best result, I can also turn my attention to the way in which I'm going to paint the surface of the sphere because it is my plan to also have backlighting but not just a floodlight that shines on the front of the sphere but to actually illuminate it from within the sphere. So I need it to be that part of the uh, PLA I've used that's in white will transmit the light but equally the bit I paint in black will block it. I spend a fair bit of time printing different revisions of the actual sphere and then also trying different methods for painting it. At each of these prints being about three and a half hours each plus some others I did, that's into 24 hours solid print time straight away. But it's well worth that time and process to arrive at something more aesthetic. So we're at a point now where we can pull together all of these aspects of the sphere's development to produce a test bed. And this is what I've arrived at. We'll just take a moment to see it in operation. This one has both the pitch and roll. Pull up, pull up. Yeah, happy with that. So that's the first of the three key design areas finished. For key design area two, I was looking at the glide slope indicator and the slip ball position and turn needle. And what I really had in mind for these was to output the value as a graphic, a moving graphic, uh, onto some form of display such as an OLED or something of that nature and to this point in the project I've only output things as um, a numerical value or a character so it's really how do I express this as a, a graphic on screen. So I spent some time looking online and I came across a website called Fly on Wire and within that there was an article DCS BIOS and Arduino TFT where 
for the KA50, someone had looked to output data, uh, including moving graphics to a display, and they mentioned how they wanted to elaborate the values returned from DCS BIOS into something that could be displayed on a TFT. And further into it, there was a YouTube video which demonstrated that in use, which looked fantastic. The link for the website uh, will be in the description of this video. And if I bring up a zoomed in image, we can see the display that was created. And you can see some of these moving graphics at the side. And this was what I was looking to do uh, in replicating certain aspects of the ADI. I could see that the article was published by someone of the name of Karen, who I reached out to. And I was able to make contact and he was very helpful and we had a, a brief collaboration where we had a sketch that we sent backwards and forwards where there were revisions of code and testing until we reached a point that for the A10C, for those aspects of the ADI, we were able to create a moving graphic to represent some of the key value data for the slip ball, turn needle um, and the glide slope. So at the very outset, the initial focus is just on getting it to work, getting that graphic, as we can see on screen, to move in line with the sim. And then move on to refinements, uh, smooth the movement of those graphics and multiple graphics at the same time. And then finally, to turn attention to the use of bigger displays, so as well as the one on the left, which is your very standard 128 by 32 OLED, You've got a bigger one on the right, this is a 1.3 inch OLED. This one runs off um, an SH1106 driver, so it's slightly different um, libraries needed within the sketch. But for this, the result's not just um, a bigger moving graphic, but it actually, by comparison, is a smoother movement on this particular one. So after some back and forth of the sketch, this is what myself and Karen arrived at. So thanks, Karen. Really appreciate your time. And what we've arrived at now is exactly what I'm looking forward to be able to integrate into the ADI panel. And for anyone interested in having access to that sketch, if you follow a link to my website in the description of this video, there's a downloadable version there. So with this display all up and running, I can turn my attention now to the glide slope indicator. And I know that this will require a larger OLED, but the good thing is the core of the code is such that with all that hardware done, with all that in place, it's just a question of getting the right display, maybe tweaking the drivers and the libraries used, and it should work on those as well. So for the glide slope indicator, I narrow it down to two possible larger uh, OLEDs that I can use here. Um, the one on the left is one actually designed more for use with a Raspberry Pi, but equally it can work on Arduino. And that runs off your typical Adafruit library. The one on the right has a bit of a different driver, and it does involve the use of a completely different library. So for the first time that caused me to steer away from uh, the Adafruit ones. It also means as well that the size of libraries uh, for other uh, types of driver it can be somewhat bigger and therefore it may be that ultimately I won't be able to run that display with an Arduino Nano but it would actually be an Arduino Mega. So through a combination of looking at which of these two displays looks best and displays the graphic best and which also dimensionally can I fit into the front of the, the fascia of my ADI because it's everything very tightly packed in there are then able to choose one and take it forward and arrive at what we can see now on screen, which is some early 3D prints of what will be the front, the very front of the ADI. And you can see the glide slope indicators incorporated into that, but also in the very top right of this screen, you can see the other one in the background, just running some other tests, and that will also be integrated into the, the bottom of this 3D print. So that's the second key design consideration finished. The third key design area was the steering bars and for that I'm looking for linear motion and a servo with a rack and pinion setup was a really good way of achieving that. I designed several different variants of this rack and pinion setup but 
The issue is that the pinion itself extends beyond the footprint and that really therefore doesn't work with the steering bars. What we can see now is a render of what I'd envisioned as a way to do this with a cam style design. And everything is therefore contained within that, the footprint of that unit. So from this we can see the setup is a carriage that slides along two metal rods and it's a arm attached to a servo that pulls that carriage along and that's what we can see here in a very early version of that. What we can see here is the one that I made initially for the HSI panel and this is for the deviation marker and in test it looked like it was working fine and we can see now where I had installed it into the unit which would be the centre of the HSI panel. However one challenge I did encounter was that the carriage from time to time would jam as it moved along those rods. And what we can see on screen now is an earlier prototype I did where that error was very pronounced so it's a good way to demonstrate here the issue that was encountered. So I'd like to give a shout out to my father-in-law Phil who spent a good bit of his time to help me in initially going back to the drawing board and looking at different ways of doing it, different principles like what we can see on screen now. Uh, looking at different styles for, of movement for the carriage and how that would uh, move across those rods. But ultimately we did arrive at the point of saying let's take what was the original design and let's refine that. So all of the key parts were refined, reprinted, retested and then following that loop over and over and also some important machining done to get the right finish to the items. We then arrived at the final version we can see now, which works a lot better. So we can see that a rod which extends from the carriage holds a steering bar. And I then look at that in terms of its positioning relative to the sphere. The use of a servo and this kind of mechanism means the movement of the steering bar is really sharp and I like that because it always struck me in the sim for this instrument how when you stow or unstow the steering bars how they really fly into place at quite a speed. So thanks Phil, that's a great outcome we've got there and that'll be to great effect in the final panel. So that's the third key design area finished. So that's all three of the key design areas looked at and it's really been quite a journey to work through those and a lot of developmental considerations along the way. Here's just some of the parts I used in all of the various testing and the revisions along the way. So what I'll now be looking to do is take all of the final designs that I've arrived at and pull them all together and construct the actual panel. So in the next video in this series we'll look at the finished panel, we'll run it through some tests to look at all of the key functionality and then we'll install it into the front dash frame. Thanks for watching.